Well, Quentin, uh, 33 years ago, um, being a bit of a, a fan of old movie magazines, I decided to start my own. Oh, uh -huh. uh, and I started this one in Australia, and it was called uh, Movie 73, and it changed its <laughs> title um, uh, yeah, every year. Uh, and uh, you know, I ran it for seven years while I was making my own movies and other people's trailers. And I think probably there are two extant copies of the very first uh, edition uh, around, and I would like you to have one of them. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, it has a nice picture of a, a man with a bloody face on yes, the front. Yes, right so, here at the... So I, I felt that this would particularly appeal to no, you. No, it, it does appeal yeah. to me quite That's a bit, William actually. William Atherton from Slaughterhouse-Five. Oh, man. Yeah. And people said to me, why are you going to put blood on the front cover? No one's going to buy that. And I said, watch them. It was Dead End Drive-In mm -hmm. was the first time that I made a note to like, oh, who is this director? All right, this guy's great, all right? And then, then I realized, oh my God, that's the guy who did Escape 2000, you know, known as Turkey Shoot, and I'll show you. All right, and so it was like, you know, uh, and oh, that's the guy that did uh, The Dragon Flies, that's the guy who did The Man from Hong Kong, and then I just started like going back and back and, you know, and, and, and checking out all your flicks. One of the things that I, ha I haven't seen the quest yet, but I've had it for a while, so I'm looking forward to seeing that. But the thing about it though is, it was Dead and Driving that made me like, wow, that's fantastic, who directed this? And then only to realize that you had done movies I'd liked before. I think one of the errors in judgment that I made as a sort of uh, neophyte filmmaker was to believe that uh, anyone can do stunts. And, you know, I did stunts and I, I've been set on fire, yeah. you know, seven times. And uh, one of those occasions was to show George how you could be very safely you yeah. know, set on fire. And so, I, I, you know, uh, how could he say no after that? Yeah, and right. the Chinese crew were just looking at me in astonishment. Directors don't normally set themselves on fire unless they are stars of the film like right, Wong yeah. Yu. Uh -huh. uh, and so yeah, we set him up for the fire stunt, uh, and uh, yeah, unfortunately, he did burn a portion of his hand. Mm -hmm. uh, so I regret that, and uh, I shouldn't have done that. But w this was kind of frontier filmmaking in Australia. We were all a bit sort of learning as we as we went. Uh, but it was very brave of George to do what he did, uh, and he was good about it. Yeah. You know, uh, when he got burned. Well, you know, the, uh, uh, John Woo on his very first movie in America, Hard Target, did the same thing with Lance Hendrickson. There's this magnificent sequence where they set Lance Hendrickson on fire and he actually is like his coat is like completely on fire mm. and he's taking it off as he's delivering his lines yeah. and everything and the fact that knowing that it's really happening mm. all right just uh, you just yeah. you can't buy that thrill no, you just I, can't I, buy I, it that, right? you can't create it there's no special effect that when they actually do it no well you know you did a film that I, I, I love it's actually one of my favorite Vietnam movies mm. of all time is the Siege of Firebase Gloria which is just wonderful. I even talked about it, I think, in Entertainment Weekly. Yeah, you did. Thank yeah. you very much for that. And it was, well, it was actually kind of funny because it was one of those things where it's like, you know, I, you know, I, I got a print of it like years ago and watched it and really liked it. I hadn't seen it in a long time and then started diving back into Australian cinema again and uh, and wanted to screen it. And I watched it with uh, uh, now, Jas now, Jasmine. Yeah, Jasmine, our mutual yeah. friend now. Yeah. Though I've never met Jasmine. No, we no, have no. a phone and email relationship. Yeah, no, no, yeah, you guys are phone boyfriend, girlfriend. Yeah, right? That, that, that's right. Uh, and, um, and so uh, uh, we watched it, you know, and, you know, and it was just terrific. And so then like literally about like two weeks later, mm. I uh, uh, do the interview with Entertainment Weekly and they go, so is there, any like you know films you want to talk about that maybe we've never heard of that you know maybe we should and and it, you know it was like two weeks ago I'd seen it and it was very fresh in my mind yeah. and I wanted to you know I wanted to see you know, oh. as, all, as a matter of fact I do yeah. all right. well thank you Quentin that but was it, very good but it was great though because actually it was the second time I'd seen it all right and yeah. it had been a long time it had been in between and it uh, and it completely yeah. and utterly uh, 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 held up and delivered in fact I even liked it better the second time well one thing that's really also you know also special about Siege of Firebase Gloria is okay. You know, when you look at war films, you know, there's war films, there's Vietnam films, mm. all right, but you know, if you look at a war film, there's all these, just like in horror films, there's subgenres inside of subgenres inside of subgenres, all mm -hmm. right, you know, there's a bunch of guys on a mission movie, mm -hmm. there's this, there's that, and the other. You know, your film is like the battle movie. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, it's you know like the Battle of the Bulge or yeah. Waterloo or something yeah. like that. It's a battle movie, yeah. all right. And it's actually you know, and you guys didn't have that much time and you didn't have that much money and everything, but you make a One hell of four. impressive, magnificent battle film, mm -hmm. all right. And I actually think probably the only one of its type of for uh, 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 dealing with Vietnam. Yeah. Every production that I worked on would always try and cooperate with other productions oh, and yeah. sharing actors mm -hmm. and sometimes sharing equipment. It was kind of, we felt 
God, we're so lucky to be making a movie. Yeah. Um, isn't it great? Australia's right, got a film yeah. industry after not having one for so many years because it had a self-supporting film industry mm -hmm. in, in the 20s and 30s. Mm -hmm. It could reco recover the budgets of film, right. but then the foreign-owned mm -hmm. you know, yeah. distributors bought up the theatre circuits right, uh, uh -huh. and, and then say, we'll make them, you'll show them. Well, you know, it was funny because, let me bring up a, a, a film, I don't know if you've ever heard it or seen it or not, but, you know, in my looking through Australian cinema, and trying to find this one and that one and everything, I came across a 16 millimeter print of a film that is just fantastic. Me and Jasmine watched it. <laughs> and um, uh, it was like from the early 60s. It's called Four Desperate Men. And it stars Aldo Ray. Oh, it's The Siege of Pinch God. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Okay, I in America it was called The Four, Four Desperate yeah. Men. And we watched it, and it is a fantastic. Fantastic, fantastic mm. action film, fantastic yeah. uh, like heist thriller yeah. action film. Aldo Ray, who I've always loved anyway, mm. is great in the yeah. movie. Everyone else, are these terrific Aussie actors. I mean, some of the best location footage of, of Sydney ever. Uh, Sydney Harbour is great. I yeah. mean, there's this little island in mm -hmm. the middle, Pinchgott yeah. Island, and uh, you know, that, that was the perfect place. 360 degrees of fantastic mm -hmm. vistas. Yeah. You can't go wrong. It's a pity it wasn't in color, but yeah. it still worked great in black and white. Oh, yeah. And it was like, you know, I was like, oh, my God, this is really yeah. an Australian film. Yeah. And I, I mean... tried to remake it as the Siege of Sydney, oh, uh, man. Um, where they had a nuclear device mm -hmm. on the island. You know, uh, I, I tell you, my son, uh, are absolute, you know, fan, you know, they are slavish fans of Kill Bill. Oh, excellent. And Kill Bill 2. Um, <laughs> and, it, it, and I've now been watching it again yeah, as one whole movie. Mm -hmm. Are you planning oh, yeah. to, to re release it on DVD and narrate, and narrate it as a whole movie? Yeah, what's go uh, uh, the thing? We actually screened for the first time ever uh, uh, when I was in Cannes mm -hmm. this last year, I was uh, on the jury. And uh, we screened, they hadn't, uh, uh, Kill Bill 2 hadn't been shown in France yet, so we had a big palais screening. But the last, uh, the last night of the festival, um, we uh, put Kill Bill together as one movie, mm -hmm. and we, we arranged it for that. So it was like, play, it plays as one whole movie, and we, like, there's some scenes that are not in it, all right, that are in, uh, that are, uh, there's some scenes in it that are not in Volume 1 and Volume 2, and there's some scenes in Volume 1 and Volume 2 that are not in that, mm -hmm. all right, to make it just play as one big movie. It has an intermission right in the middle of it, mm. you know, uh, yeah. intermission music, all right, yeah. the whole thing. And, uh, yeah, we're going to, uh, we'll be eventually, and, and that's also the Japanese version, which mm -hmm. has stuff that, that was never shown in any, other, only shown in Hong Kong and Japan that I made especially for them because they can handle it. <laughs> Other people can't, mm. uh, and so the whole so it's that version, all right, mm -hmm. all together as one movie. So uh, we're waiting kind of after everything to die down, and once Miramax uh, um, disentangles themselves from Disney and have have their new company, we're going to uh, uh, release Kill Bill, the full thing all together. Yeah. Oh, that's great! Well, I look forward to see. I look forward to see the scenes that, that uh -huh. uh, you, you know, we didn't see. Yeah. Uh, would you be? You still go to black and white? In nope. the, no, yeah. no, 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 not in the Japanese okay. version. Okay. Yeah, yeah, in the Japanese version, and we stayed. We kept it in color. I can show that in Japan, and they will see it for what it is, the color red, mm -hmm. all right? But uh, already people talked about the blood and Kill Bill all the time. If, if, if I had not gone to, uh, uh, if I had kept it all in color, then that's all anyone would have talked about. Yeah. Is just, oh, it's so bloody, it's so bloody, it's so bloody. They still talked about that a lot anyway, but oh, that yeah. really, it, it, you know, with, you know, in Europe, and with the exception of Italy, in Europe and uh, uh, America, it's like it's it's something they just can't. Get, they wouldn't be able to see the movie mm. for the blood. And then the cool part about it is, is I kind of get to have my cake and eat it too, mm. because the black and white looks really cool. All well, right. You see, the MPAA, bless their little hearts, uh, they took exception to the exploding head in Turkey Shoot Escape mm -hmm. 2000, uh, and they demanded it be cut out. Mm. Uh, so New World dutifully cut it out of uh, a print. Uh, sent it back and were passed. And then the rest of the country played uncut. Mm -hmm. um, and then someone informed on them and they mm -hmm. had to withdraw these prints and uh -huh. cut these bits out. So I, I wanted to have the last word. So I put the exploding head <coughs> on the drive-in screen in Dead End Drive-In. Oh, uh, excellent, yes. And and it goes through with an R uh -huh. uh, in America, no problem. So finally, well, it's like it's once removed. All yes, right. exactly. It's just once exactly. removed. Yeah. Well, now let me ask you a question because you worked with that whole shady New World company after Roger Corman they yeah. uh, yeah. uh, sold it and everything. What were your experience with those guys? Oh, shady. 
I mean, uh, it, it, they, you see, the thing about Roger Corman is that he was a filmmaker. Yeah. Uh -huh. You know, he had a passion for yeah. celluloid, and you know, there were, wasn't a job on the crew he couldn't do. Right. Uh, and so, when he took on a film for distribution, it yeah, it, it, it he he would invest some passion into mm. it. I mean, I remember when uh, one of the last things he, he took on, I think, was Shogun Assassin. Yeah, yeah, he, uh -huh, the, yeah. Uh, K Lone Wolf and Cub compressed. They did a great version of they it, too. They did a great I version. That, that I mean, version stands yeah, up absolutely. to this day. And you know the ad line they wanted to use? What? Shogun Assassin, he'll kick your ass in. <laughs> but but the, no newspaper would print it. Right. So, I don't know. Oh, dear. Um, but but Corman, Corman, yeah, he loved film so much that he would not let you down. Yeah. He would get the best. He would squeeze as much out of it uh, as possible. Um, these guys were just number crunchers. They were lawyers. We met, you know, yeah, we like, met like six times. years ago, yeah, or like yeah. very briefly at a little cocktail kind of party for just a couple seconds, That's, actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it, was, it was when Mira Sol Solvino. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, and you had just directed her dad in a in a in a film. That's right, in Escape Clause. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. And um, uh, but you know, you know, we met each other in passing, yeah. kind of thing, and then um, but you know, it was like we didn't really have a relationship when I I uh, um, uh you know, at the Kill Bill premiere, mm. all right, in yeah. Sydney, when I dedicated the screening to you. And it was just truly because of your, your work, well, all right? Thank and you. And I liked it, and I wanted to shine a light, all right, mm. on, uh, you, know, you know, I thought Kill Bill was the perfect movie to yeah. do that with, all yeah. right, to uh, Australia's own history of yeah. genre filmmaking, in which I consider, you know, you the, uh, you know, you the leader, yeah. all right, of that. And so what did you think about it? How did, how did you hear about it, all right? Um, um, somebody called me um, and, uh, and, and said uh, this happened and then sent me a Sydney Morning Herald article uh, uh -huh. that, uh, in which a somewhat sort of snooty critic had uh -huh. sort of interviewed you and, yeah, and thought, you know, um, you know, but the name I was expecting to hear, you know, Peter Weir, Julian yeah. Armstrong, <laughs> but the name I heard was Brian Trenchard Smith, who's yeah. Yeah, probably had a, an all a right average career somewhere somewhere <laughs> but but uh, but you were a big fan uh, and it, 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 it was but it, I love uh, it was written was, in mocking terms yeah but that was the fun that was the funnest part about it, actually after doing that and doing press and everything and them asking I love to shut those guys down yeah, all right? yeah. they would ask it and I would shut them down yeah, all right yeah. I would you know uh, they would have to they would have to acquiesce all yeah. right at least yeah. as far as like no, uh, at least as far as my opinion mm. was concerned yeah. they, there yeah. would be no changing of it no. and then I would sit there and defend each point, all right, you know, well, point great. by point by well, point. That, 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 that's very kind. Uh, and, but, you know, uh, you love film. Mm -hmm. I mean, your you celluloid runs in your <laughs> yeah, veins. Yeah, I think uh, so. And it's always good to meet a kindred spirit. Yes, I agree. Because, you know, I, you know, I, I would pay to direct, but happily they're still paying me. Yeah, uh, <laughs> right. Um, <laughs>